This is Field Target Tech. I'm Tom Holland. This is episode 7. And we're, today we're going to talk about optically centering a scope, um, which is an important thing when you want to mount it properly on an air rifle. Um, in the past, there's been many cases where guys have mounted an air gun uh, scope on an air gun and started to sight it in. They go to the range and they start cranking on the turrets and everything, make sure everything's tight, and they start adjusting, and they find out that when they put the scope on the gun, they run out of adjustments, and they end up bottoming the scope out. What happens is, again, <laughs> excuse my artwork, is they'll be aiming at a target, and what will happen is they'll end up with an impact way down low, and they start cranking on their turrets, and they bring the thing, the, the point of impact up closer to the target, but it doesn't reach the target. They run out of adjustment, and they don't know what to do, and they end up damaging the scope in bottoming it out like that. The cheaper lower end scopes, um, when, you bottom them out, when you bottom them out one way or the other, whether it be left or right or up and down, you're going to damage the scope, um, especially the lower end scopes. Um, and what ends up happening is, here's another cheap uh, rendition of a scope. And inside the scope, there's called what's called an erector tube. And that's where your crosshairs are. And when you have your turret of your scope, such as this one here for demonstration purposes, you have your elevation and you have your windage. And this is your, uh, your parallax, your focus. And what happens is, guys, start cranking one way or the other and what happens is there's a spring inside um, the erector tube right there in between this turret and the erector tube and what happens is if you back out on that turret in on both of them you could lose that spring inside this erector tube and the, the scope housing and it falls in and then you have a turret that just spins and it doesn't click. Same thing is if you crank them down too far, you could actually dent this tube on the top and on the right side. And when you end up looking through your sight picture, the top of it will be dark or the right side of it will be dark of your scope housing. And maybe it'll be dark completely. Uh, you, you'll damage the scope beyond repair if you do any of those things. Um, I hear guys saying, well, if, if, I, if I'm really careful and I go one way and I click until it stops and then count the clicks going the other way until it stops and be really careful, divide by two and I'm in the center. That's not a recommended way to do it and you have a 50-50 chance of damaging the scope. Um, I had a gentleman at my home range over the summer put a scope on the gun starts cranking away on all the windage and elevations and he damaged the scope in doing so. Um, I explained to him what he had to do in order to correct that situation um, and he it seemed that he listened to me and he went back and he sent the scope back to the company that he bought purchased it from and they warranted uh, they swapped the scope back under warranty and gave him a new scope and they told him you damaged this scope by cranking down on it too much if, if you do it again we're not going to honor the warranty so he puts the, the same brand scope and everything same model on the same gun and does the same thing and he goes and sends that scope back they did not honor that uh, warranty so the cheaper low-end scopes you, you have to be you know you have to optically center them and you shouldn't take for granted that they are optically centered from the, uh, from the factory um, and what ends up happening is uh, you end up cranking on them like that and you ruin the scope and it's a surefire way to ruin the scope um, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, show you how to optically center the scope okay guys in order to optically center the scope you need to make a simple little device this is there's several ways to optically center a scope. Some guys use the mirror method, and they use uh, strings and stuff like that. I find that this is the easiest way to do it. It's the quickest. 
um, and it's it's probably the most foolproof. Um, I made a little jig here out of some cardboard. Again, this is for demonstration purposes. I have an actual one that's built someplace out of wood and metal, and I just haven't found all the parts to put it together. So I made a quick one out of cardboard just to demonstrate this process. Um, just make a frame of some kind, and you can make it out of cardboard. Um, something like this would be probably be fine also. And you want to cut two V's in it. And what you want to do is put put a target or something. I do it in my in, in my in my uh, in my apartment. I do it at ten yards away, um, and I find that that's usually good enough for my zero at thirty. It's usually pretty on. It's a few clicks off when you do it. Now what you want to do is you take this and you want to take a white background. It's probably the easiest to see. You don't want to use a dark background or a background with a lot of targets and a lot of stuff going on. Just a white sheet of paper or a white piece of poster board or something and just put a black dot on it. And what you want to do is you want to take the scope and we're going to use this little bushnell banner that I have here and you just want to put it in the V. You put it in the V and you won't be able to see the crosshairs through this but what you want to do is you want to look through the scope at your target and you want to maybe shim this with with books or some things in order to line it up where the scope and this stays perfectly still and then what you want to do is just spin the scope as you look through it and trying to keep the crosshairs here now what you will see when you do that process you'll see your crosshairs and this, if this looks familiar, this is my uh, makeshift rolling table that I had a couple weeks ago. What will happen is, as you spin it, the crosshairs will do this. As you spin. And it will it'll go around the dot. And what you want to do is stop, adjust it a few clicks, and you're trying to get this as small of a circle as you could possibly get. In a perfect world, you would want it to be dead center and just spin all the way around on that one point as you turn it in your little jig. And that's basically the, the, the whole process. It's not a difficult thing to do. It might take a little bit of doing on your windage and your elevation to get this movement smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Now you have to remember if you can't get it adjusted where it does that and it doesn't stay, it's probably a damaged scope. It's not difficult to damage a lot of these um, lower to medium end scopes. Um, so if, you, uh, if you're swapping guns from, uh, if, excuse me, if you're swapping scopes from one gun to another, um, it's a good idea to optically center it. Now, what you would do is after the scope is optically centered in that manner is you want to get a pair of fully adjustable mounts after the fact. Um, you optically center the scope and you put a pair of fully adjustable mounts on and what that will allow you to do is whatever your distance is um, if you're shooting from this point and your target is here what that'll do is that'll allow you to adjust your scope on the rifle left and right as well to that to your zero point. Um, I I'm usually use 30 yards at that point. Um, if the scope is optically centered and I can adjust using mounts, I use sports match mounts from uh, the UK. Um, these are adjustable up and down, left and right. They're probably some of the best mounts that you can get your hands on. Um, guys, don't buy the $20 mounts made out of aluminum that are garbage. Um, these are a little bit on the expensive side. These, depending on where you get them, they're probably around $125, eh, no, more than that, about $135 to $150 for a set of these. Um, they're not cheap, but it's going to save you so much problems and so much headaches in the long run. And what you do is you mount these onto your gun, you put your optically centered scope on, you adjust these and it, they're a little bit difficult to adjust because they're very sensitive and what you do is you want to shoot a pellet 
see where it ends up adjust these mounts do not adjust the scope get get your scope at your impact point shooting as close to the center as you can possibly get it with these adjustments then you could take your windage and your elevation a few clicks here a few clicks there and then you're zeroed and you're still optically centered and you have nothing to worry about after that um, again you want to use a quality mount you want to zero out your um, your scope you want to optically center it and that's basically all there is to setting up a scope onto a rifle it sounds a lot complicated um, it, it's a very simple process as I just showed you um, spin the scope optically center it mount it on the gun and use the mounts to adjust it for your zero and then you can adjust after that um, other than that there's not a whole lot to talk about other than um, just use quality mounts uh, you don't have to use those sports match mounts there's other mounts that go on guns that have um, a droop machined into them of five minutes of angle 10 15 20 and there's guys out there that make custom ones as well um, so but the best way to do it I found is the sports match they they work the best and they're very solid and reliable mount um, other than that um, We'll, uh, we'll be talking about some other stuff in the next couple of weeks or so. Next week, I'm going to try explaining. <laughs> we'll see how that works. We'll try explaining ranging using mill dots and maybe different magnifications for, like, um, backing up some of your data or, you know, finding ranges on lower power scopes, which, are, which is a little bit difficult um, over your, your Cytrons and your Nico Sterlings and your Schmidt and Benders and Marches and stuff. Um, so we'll, we'll get into that next week. Um, guys, I've had a lot of good input. You guys are really great out there by watching all of these. Um, I got a lot of views and a lot of input. You guys want to hear anything in the future? You guys want me to do something? Um, if I can't do something, I'll steer you on in the right direction where someone out there might have put up a video already about it or will in the future or has the capability of doing so. But if you guys have any more ideas, um, I got a lot of stuff coming in the future. Um, click like and subscribe down below and uh, enjoy. And don't be afraid to shoot me an email or shoot me a comment on some stuff. If you need some clarification on something I've done in any of these videos, uh, please feel free to contact me. I'm Tom Holland, and this is Field Target Tech.